Welcome to Everest Base Camp Trek Day 3. Today's video is going to be all about accommodations and food. Welcome. What you can expect from the tea houses, what you can expect from the food, how much it costs, what's included, what's not included, and things like that. But not to worry, we're still going to show some hiking along the way. For example, today is an acclimatization day for us, and we did a small two hour hike, and we're getting our first glimpse at some of these amazing 8,000 meter Himalayan peaks. Take a look. The purpose of an acclimatization hike is to try and train your body to adjust to the thinner atmosphere at altitude. These acclimatization hikes are key in increasing our probability to reach Everest Base Camp successfully. Hello, Bieber. We have a friend that joined us. I'm gonna call you Everest. Good puppy. Oh, I love when dogs join us on the treks. So, Arpin just informed us that this right here, it's actually not a mountain, it's just a hill. It doesn't have a name because it's not a mountain. Just, it's just a hill, so. <laughs> Don't be impressed. <laughs> so this village we are entering now here is all Sherpa people. So this entire community is considered Sherpa and it's one of the only few, it's one of the few communities where it's all Sherpas. This right here, that's yak poop. They dry it out for a few weeks and they use that for fire because in this particular uh, mountain town, they don't have like wood because there's no trees. Super interesting. Using, yeah, I don't need to dive into it anymore. You can understand. Do it. And then we were very grateful for the opportunity to walk through Kumjing Village. It is always special to see how other people live, especially at this high altitude, including women making rocks into smaller rocks to use for building and kids playing outside. This looks like a green screen. It's not fake, it's real. It's crazy. Oh my gosh, it will never get old, these views. Welcome. So this is a pretty typical tea house. What they do provide is this little mattress pad, some pillows, and a blanket. We have to bring our own sleeping bags, but also definitely no cuddling here, which I feel like is not right in the mountains. I feel like it actually, the body heat would be better, but two separate little beds for us. Overall, the size of the room, pretty good, pretty big. The best part about this room though, is that we have an outlet, which some places you actually have to pay to use, but here we got just our dangly little adapter doing just fine. The last part of our room is we do have a private bathroom, this nice little white number, which is spoiled, but we got this sink, Great toilet with a toilet seat, which is a huge bonus. And then a shower, which we 100% will not use because it is only cold water. No thank ya. Now, the aesthetic of these tea houses is nothing fancy, but I will say there is something about these tea houses that make you feel at home. Now, most of them are structured the same from the standpoint that you just saw our room. And then there's usually a common area where people hang out, all the trekkers hang out, you eat food, lunch, breakfast, lunch, dinner, 
play cards, and just kind of relax. So I'm gonna go show you that area right now. So this is kind of the main area of the tea house. This is also where we eat all of our meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's also a great place to meet other people that are doing the Everest Base Camp trek and just kind of talk, play cards. It's really just a great space here. And this is pretty typical of most tea houses. Can I do, uh, can I do another lemon tea? For dinner tonight, I ordered the vegetable curry, which personally I have found if you are somebody that eats a little bit more, that the, the meals with rice tend to fill you up a little bit more. So for dinner, I've been getting things with the rice. Um, so this is the vegetable curry, which is really good. You got some veggies here, obviously some rice. This is like a little um, like kind of tortilla chip thing. And then this stuff right here is, they call it pickles, but it's kind of just like some vegetables with some seasoning on it. And Meg. I got fried potatoes with vegetables. And that's exactly what it is. It's super good. So it's actually also very typical that you order your breakfast the night before. So that way when you wake up, it's ready to go. So that's what we're doing now. With black coffee. So we got our dessert here for the night. Now typically we get apples and pomegranate, but Arpin today threw in a little extra special treat with his Snickers. He says it's good for our body and it's gonna give us fuel for tomorrow. So obviously it's it's gotta be healthy, right? All right, so I figured I would explain the tea house culture a little bit because I feel like this is really, really unique to uh, this trek and it's really cool. So tea houses are where you stay on the Everest Base Camp trek, obviously. Um, it's very typical within the culture that you stay at the tea house and they will feed you breakfast, lunch, and dinner with and give you a place to stay. So typically if you're staying at a tea house, it is kind of customary or respectful to actually eat your meals at that tea house. And that's typically what everyone does. It's a really cool culture to meet people, like I said earlier, as well as um, it's just some consistency that you're gonna find across the entire Everest Base Camp trek. Now, it wouldn't be a tea house without a wood-burning stove and a teapot. These are very typical at most of the tea houses. We've seen them in every single one, which it's living up to its name as a tea house. So, if you're wondering why they're called tea houses, that's why. Okay, and that's a wrap on day three. Bye. We're getting packed up for day four. Let me show you this view outside our window, though. Pretty sweet. Time to go get some breakfast. Black tea, right? Yes. Starting the morning off with some black tea. Meg got some coffee. Black coffee. For breakfast this morning, I went with the apple and honey porridge. Looks really good. Meg with, went with a chocolate pancake. Looks really good as well. I actually got that yesterday. For breakfast, we've been trying to keep it pretty simple. Um, they have like pancakes, they have like oatmeal or porridge, fruit. Um, they also have like egg stuff. Um, you basically have access to the whole menu, but we've just been trying to keep it pretty simple for breakfast in the morning. And we're hiking. All right, we are out of Namche Bazaar and we are headed to Tengbuche. We will miss Namche's modern amenities, bakeries, and just things, because from here on out, things are gonna be a little bit more scarce, a little bit colder, not quite as good uh, heating, um, not quite as many uh, amenities. So we're for sure gonna miss that from here on out. But really looking forward to uh, the challenges that are ahead. There also happens to be a race, a trail race going on here on Everest Base Camp. And they're like running and jumping and sprinting down these hills. And me and Meg are just trying to keep our breath and walk. It's quite impressive. It's very impressive. I couldn't imagine. Lots of training, I'm sure.
All right, today we are getting our first really clear view of Everest. You can see behind me, it's kind of hard to see. There's a mountain out front and that's Lhotse. And then right behind it is Everest. Very cool. Both uh, mountains are over 8,000 meters. Two of the tallest mountains in the Himalayas. Absolutely epic. Just in case you already forgot, that right there, that's Mount Everest. We're only I, a little excited. I have to keep saying it because it's like pinching myself. Like that's Mount Everest. I've seen so many TV shows and documentaries on that mountain right there. Oh, so special. Okay, being that we're hiking for five hours today, I figured I would take this opportunity to um, talk about food quantity here on our Everest Base Camp Trek. Now this is something that always uh, sparks me and Meg's curiosity because we're always worried about if we're gonna be eating enough food, if there's gonna be enough food, are we gonna go to bed hungry? So let's talk about it. For, with our tour group, we have three meals included each day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. A few snacks along the way are also included, like some cookies and such. To be completely honest with you, um, if you're somebody that eats a little bit more food than the average, you can probably expect that you're going to need to buy a little extra food yourself. Some snacks between lunch and dinner, that's when me and Meg mostly buy our extra food and things like that. We typically spend anywhere from five to six dollars a day on extra food. Now, what is nice about the tea houses is like I said last night, they have a pretty consistent menu. So you will start to learn kind of what meals are gonna fill you up more than others. For example, what we found is the meals with rice tend to fill us up more than the meals that are like soups or noodles or things of that nature. Okay, we're gonna have to put this food quantity conversation on a brief pause because we got this hill coming up. And we're at altitude, I can't talk, I can't talk when I'm breathing hard. <sighs> now, you can probably expect that the food quantities are gonna be pretty good. But I would say in general, expect to pay a little extra for some snacks and some extra food, especially if you're somebody that eats quite a bit. That's my food quantity talk. <laughs> Okay, so if you're wondering what to expect with restrooms or bathrooms on the Everest Base Camp Trail, take a look at this one. A hole in the ground with a bunch of hay. I feel like a farm animal. <laughs> All right, sitting down for a little lunch here. Let's see what they got going on on their menu here. You got the classic teas. Let's see, what else? Potato dishes are always good. The veggie fried potatoes, always a, always a good one. Let's see, they got the fried rice. Dalbot's a classic, I might get that tonight though. Um, Oh yeah, they got some various soups here. These are always pretty good, like some noodle soups, tomato soup, chicken soup, garlic soup, potato soup. Yeah, I'll do black tea, and can I do the fried potatoes with oh, veggies? Okay, of Thank you. All right, so I got some fried potatoes with some vegetables. Meg, let's explain what you got. I just got a, like a grilled cheese <laughs> with some fries because it just sounds good in my belly right now, so, yep. Hey, whatever floats your boat. And we're moving again. Therefore, the heart rate spikes.
All right, so right there, boop, boop, boop. That's where we had lunch about an hour ago, covering some good ground here. Made it to Tengbuche after a long, steady uphill climb. You, Bakta, how do you beat us? He beat us every time. He's, I think, right from King Bakta. All right, made it into our tea house room for the night. To be completely honest with you, exactly what is expected. Similar to last room, almost actually exactly the same, I'd say. You can see we got our two beds. I will say, though, this one is quite a bit warmer right now. So we'll see how that uh, plays out throughout the night. But the major difference is that we do not have a bathroom in this one. So I'm going to show you the bathroom right now. Now, our bathroom is not a super long walk from our room, but... In the middle of the night, I can imagine it's going to be pretty cold. Here's the sink. Here's one toilet. A little bit more rustic than our last place. And I think there's a shower too. Somewhere. So tonight I went with the dalbat, which is probably one of the most classic meals you're going to find here at the tea houses. It comes with rice. You have this kind of like bean curry. And then you got some potatoes and vegetables here. Um, this is pretty standard what you're gonna see for most dalbat, but um, you're gonna find this at every tea house and it is for sure a staple. Thank you. A little pro tip for you. Also, if you order the dalbat, they will, they will feed you until you cannot eat anymore. The guy came around again, he was like, more? And he just gave me basically a second plate. So if you're ever really, really hungry, order the dalbat. They'll just keep giving it to you. I thought the Snickers was just a treat for yesterday. <coughs> now, though the menu is quite diverse here in the tea houses, you do have to be careful about exactly what you are deciding to eat. Okay, so we heard before we got here that you're not supposed to have meat on the mountain, right? But I was a little confused because as we were hiking through these towns, I would see chickens and I would see cows and we see yak and I was like, well, there's meat here if they decided to use those animals for those products. But what we found out is this land, actually all animals are sacred. So they won't sacrifice animals for food. So any meat that is on the mountain has to be shipped here, which most likely means it had to be carried in by either a person or an animal, which is why it's probably not that good. So obviously eat at your own risk, but I would strongly probably recommend staying away from the meat, even though some people on the trail do eat it. Also be careful with like things like eggs, um, like dairy products. Again, it's all up to your own risk, but just keep that in mind. For me and Meg, we are definitely going vegetarian this week, which is kind of a bummer because we're missing out on quite a bit of protein, but it's worth it for us to keep our stomachs in order. Well, the power just went out, so I guess that's a wrap on day four. <sighs> Good morning, day five. <sighs> Starting the day off with a little tea like we typically do. Now, believe it or not, tea at the tea houses on most tours is not included in your price. So you do have to pay extra for tea, which for us is almost a necessity. It's about a dollar per cup. It gets a little bit more expensive as you um, go up in altitude. But I would say that's probably actually where we spend most of our money is actually buying cups of tea, which for us, like I said, it's, it's a necessity when you're staying at the tea houses. But I thought that was kind of surprising and most tours don't include any hot drinks, so coffees, hot chocolates, things like that. Fun. And we are off on day five of trekking. Today we are headed to Dingbushe, which for us is going to be a really big day because me and Meg are go going to be both setting personal records for elevation. We're going to be going up to like 4,410. Yeah, 4,410 meters, which is well over 14,000 feet in elevation. So it's going to be a big day today. That's Everest. We're getting closer. And look there. Look at that time and stuff. It was late. Late, yeah. Late at night, and we had to leave early. Yeah. She did
This mountain right behind me here is called Amadeplum. It's got to be my favorite looking mountain. It's named that because the taller one, taller one is the mother, and then the smaller one is the daughter. Amadeplum. It's my favorite looking mountain here so far. Baliucha, baliucha, hami baliucha, zam zam. Vistara, 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 vistara means slowly, slowly. Vistara, 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 slowly. This is a new order for us. This is Sherpa stew, which is like vegetables. And there's like some little potato like dumplings in here. I'm excited. That's good. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, let's talk water because you're gonna be drinking a lot of it. Now, there's a few different options in how, or a few different ways you can handle water here on the Everest Base Camp Trek. I would say the most popular and the one that's gonna be the most budget friendly is going to be um, having some way to purify tap water. We have been using tablets, so you just stick a tablet in, you wait 30 minutes, you're good to go. You could also bring like your own filter or something like that. But, that's gonna be your best option. Outside of that, bottled water is gonna be your best case, but to be completely honest, it gets pretty expensive with how much water you have to drink. So just keep that in mind. I would also highly recommend getting yourself some sort of an electrolyte. You're gonna notice that your bathroom habits are probably gonna increase here on the mountain and retaining some of that water is gonna be really, really important. So getting some electrolytes is key. Good luck. We need it. Look at this view of Lotse. Feels like I can touch the top. Just kidding. <laughs> I can't touch the top. Ding Boucher, we made it. 4,410 meters. Woo! All right, made it to our place in Ding Boucher. Again, pretty similar. This one's a little bit smaller, and but but positive. We do have our own bathroom, so we don't have to go outside at night, which is nice. Okay, let's talk added expenses at the tea house. We kind of talked about it with food, but the tea houses. You can probably expect that nothing is free. This was something that kind of surprised me and Meg when we first got uh, to the tea houses. Um, everything costs money. So, not that that's necessarily a bad thing or it's super expensive, it's just something to be aware of. For example, if you want to charge your phone, if you want to charge your camera, if you want to take a hot shower, okay, all of those things are going to cost extra money. If you want Wi-Fi, all those things are going to cost a little extra money, so just be aware of that. So plan accordingly, bring charging banks if you need, because that will save you quite a bit of money in the long run. Now, similar to that of the food, you can probably expect that as you make your way up the mountain, prices on those things are going to increase. All right, that's a wrap on day five in our second Everest video. Hopefully you enjoyed learning a bit about the tea house and food culture here on Everest Base Camp Trek. Hopefully you're able to take away some pointers. I know we have really been enjoying both the food and the tea houses on this trek thus far. We will see you in the next Everest video. In episode three of our Everest Base Camp trek, we talk about all things trail conditions. We will dive into what you can expect from elevation gain and altitude. You definitely can tell the air is thinner up here for sure. We will answer questions like, how did our bodies adapt? How did we prepare physically for the workload? And even how we stayed warm at night. 
So much action to come, so hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of it. See you in episode 3.